Welcome to iLecture Online. Now let's find the curvature of a circle of radius 2. And again, we start with a diagram. Here's the circle. You can see that definitely on the x-axis and the y-axis it crosses across those axes when the radius equals 2 or when the value equals 2. Notice we're traveling around the circle in a counterclockwise direction, which means the unit tangent vector is directed like this. And the unit normal vector will be directed like this because to go from the unit tangent vector to the unit normal vector you have to travel 90 degrees in a counterclockwise direction. We have defined the x and the y components with respect to the parametric variable t. In this case t would be the angle as to be 2 times the cosine of t and 2 times the sine of t. And then if you want to express it in terms of the distance traveled along the circle along the arc of the circle, then x and y can be defined as 2 times the cosine of s over t and 2 times the sine of s over, or I should say s over 2 and 2 times the sine of s over 2 because the relationship between arc length and the angle t when t is expressed in radians, s equals 2 times t or t equals s divided by 2. So now we can express the position vector r from the origin to the edge of the circle in terms of the arc length s as 2 times the cosine of s over t in the i direction plus 2 times sine of s over 2 in the j direction. And then if we want to find the unit tangent vector, we know that's equal to the derivative of the position vector divided by the magnitude of the derivative of the position vector. So the position vector, the derivative of that would be minus the sine of s over 2i. Where did the 2 go? Well, we also have to take the derivative of the angle, which would be 1 half, cancels out the 2. Same over here, take the derivative of the angle, which is 1 half, cancels out the 2, and the derivative of the sine is the positive cosine. The derivative of the cosine is a negative sign. Then the magnitude of that it will be equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the two components. And notice that will be equal to 1 in the denominator. So that means that the unit vector, the unit tangent vector, will simply be equal to what's the numerator, so we express that right there. Then we recall an equation that tells us that the derivative of the unit tangent vector with respect to the arc length is equal to the curvature times the normal unit vector. And therefore, since the magnitude of the normal unit vector is equal to 1, the magnitude of the curvature is going to be equal to the magnitude of the left side. So what we need to do now is take the derivative of the unit tangent vector with respect to s, which we do right here. And then you see that if we take the derivative of this with respect to s, we again take the derivative of the angle, which is 1 half, so we end up with a 1 half times the cosine of s over 2. There's a negative there because the derivative of the sine is a positive cosine, so the negative doesn't go away. And here, when we take the derivative of the cosine, we get the negative sine, and the 1 half comes from taking the derivative of the angle. So now we have the derivative of the tangent unit vector with respect to s and the magnitude of that is going to equal the magnitude of the curvature. So we first factor out a one half and then we take the magnitude of that which is one half times this quantity right here which is the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. This will be equal to one so therefore the magnitude of this is equal to one half therefore the curvature of that is equal to one half. Now the magnitude of the curvature. So basically I should of course do this. However, when we take a look at our drawing and we know that we're traveling in a counterclockwise direction, notice that the angle here will be 90, the angle over there will be 180. The angle is increasing as I travel along the circle like this. An increasing angle means that the curvature is positive, which means that the curvature times the normal vector is equal to the rate of change of the direction of the tangent, the unit tangent vector, with respect to s. So as you can see, the unit tangent vector is changing like this. So n times k will point towards the center of the circle, which is what we'd expect to see. So therefore, not only is the absolute value of k equal to 1 half, k is a positive quantity, so k is equal to 1 half as well. Now, the 2 here is not coincidentally equal to the radius of the circle. It turns out it is, and therefore we can say in general that the curvature of a circle is equal to 1 over the radius of the circle. That makes sense because the bigger the radius, the less the, the, the curve curves, so to speak, because you have to travel a longer distance to get the same change in the angle, and so it's proportional to the radius. 
the bigger the radius, the smaller the curvature, the smaller the radius, the bigger the curvature. And that only makes sense. And that's how it's done. I use just the right number of words, just like the right number of notes. <laughs> You're taping this, aren't you? <laughs>